Trinity Exposed, number 5, The Invisible God, part 2. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 through 20. It says here, Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. The Bible does teach that Jesus is the Son of God, absolutely. People say, I reject that. That's not true. That's a lie. He's not God the Son. Why? Because the Bible doesn't say that. He is the Son of God. Colossians chapter 1, verse 14. In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who? Jesus. That's what it's talking about there. Look at verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, Visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Speaking of Jesus. And he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Okay? God the Father is in Jesus Christ. How do you know? Because in Jesus, all the fullness dwells. <laughs> you say, well, no, it's, it's talking a separate thing. Okay, then God's over here, and he says, every, in, in you, Jesus, there, everything, all the fullness dwells. Well, then what does that make God the Father if he's somehow separate from Jesus Christ? It's a problem. Verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, to, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Hmm. For the invisible things of the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. Romans chapter 1. Invisible. God. Verse 15. Talking about verse 13 there. His dear son, verse 15, who is the image of the invisible God? You say, well, that's Jesus in his own image and things. Jesus wasn't invisible when he was walking around here on the earth. Who is the invisible God? The Father, the soul. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 14 through 16. Some more good stuff. That thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, with whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. What is it? This light here, which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see. It's talking about the soul of the Godhead. God the Father. That's what it's talking about there. That is the invisible God. And the image of the invisible God is Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these, these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory. What did we just read in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 16? Dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see. Verse 3 of uh, Hebrews chapter 1 who being in the brightness of His glory and the express image of His person. Jesus is the image of the person of God the Father. And upholding all things by the word of His power, when He had by Himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. You say, well, okay, but then see, that proves that they're separate. Well, you got all kinds of problems if you want to try to say that they're separate somehow, that they're two different beings, two different persons. Number one, you have no scripture to support the word persons in relation to the Godhead. No scripture at all. But you have all kinds of other problems. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Where does that leave God and the Holy Spirit? That in him he might have the preeminence in all things. What's that do for God the Father and the Holy Spirit if they're separate persons? 
It's a real problem. You see, lost people don't understand the Godhead because understanding the Godhead is something that is spiritual. That's why they'll cling to something pagan like the Trinity teaching. You better be careful what you believe.